The next step is going to be go ahead to set up our rate control. And this will tell it what type of valve we're going to be controlling and what type of feedback sensor we have installed. So we'll go ahead and select on for rate control. Just like section control setup, we have to select the, the module location. We'll select one drive in our case and the module serial number that's going to be controlling our rate control valve. We'll go ahead and select OK. We'll go ahead and go and enter drive setup. And in this drive setup screen is where we'll select the valve type as well as the feedback sensor type. Our particular sprayer is equipped with a servo valve, so we'll select servo. And the plumbing type is in line. The valve behavior when sections closed dictates what the control valve is going to do when the section valves are shut off. In the case of a of a servo valve, we have lock and last position available and close. We'll want to have it. We'll want to select lock and last position. This will ensure that we don't have any sort of lag when it comes or when the system decides to turn the rate control valve back on. The auxiliary valve setting is going to be where we'll select if we have a master valve or a dump valve. Most simple sprayer systems do, are not equipped this way, but some have a master valve that shuts on, on and off the product to the pump. The next, the last setting in this screen here is going to be the pump disarming switch. This is usually enabled on John Deere, some CNH, and Rogator sprayers. Uh, most sprayers do not require this setting to be enabled. Go ahead and leave it disabled in our case. And we'll enter the feedback setup. So in this screen, we're going to select what type of flow meter we, we have installed, whether it be Raven um, or other. Other will be selected if you say you have a Hineker flow meter, any other make besides Raven. Ours is Raven, so we'll go ahead and select that. The flow meter calibration number is going to be sourced from a tag on the flow meter. This, this will tell us how many pulses per gallon the flow meter outputs uh, as, a, as its feedback signal. In our case, it's 710. So we'll go ahead and enter that. Make sure that the units are correct, either in pulses per gallon or pulses per liter, depending on what's on the, the unit that's on the tag. Go ahead and select OK. We'll go ahead and enter a minimum flow. It's always a good idea to enter something into the minimum flow setting, uh, whether it, instead of leaving it at zero. In our case, we're going to go ahead and put one gallon a minute. And select OK. Number of nozzles is the setting that you'll, where you'll enter how many stiff spray nozzles are installed on your system. In our case, we have 12. So we go ahead and enter that. And the last setting here within rate control setting is the low no flow timeout. This is going to only be available in version of 7.0 firmware. What this tells us is how long does the system wait to throw an error code before it sees feedback. So for example, say it takes 10 seconds for your flow meter to give signal back to the display. We'll enter 10 seconds here. That way the system will wait to see that signal before it, it kicks it out and shuts down the system in error. Go ahead and select next. And this brings us to the sensor screen. Within this screen is where we'll configure a, some sort of uh, pressure sensor, um, bin level, that sort of thing, uh, RPM sensor. So on a sprayer, it'll be a liquid pressure sensor. You'll name the sensor. And then you can enable the alarms to tell us to tell the operator uh, that there's a problem. So say we drop below 15 psi on the boom, or we go above 30, and we can also set the time interval that it waits to go ahead and um, throw that warning. We can select sensor setup, select our module. Each rate and section control module or, or just rate module has two, two sensor inputs, so pressure one and pressure two. 
we'll want to go ahead and select which input we're connected into and this will tell the system uh, where to look for our pressure sensor feedback and that'll conclude the sensor setup for a liquid pressure sensor back in the sensor setup it'll show us the sensor that we just created The last section of control setup is the sensors tab. This is where we'll configure any kind of pressure sensor that's installed in our system. So go ahead and select add. Within this sensor we're able to configure what type of sensor we're going to be looking for. In our case it'll be liquid pressure. We'll name the sensor. Select OK. In this screen, we can also select whether or not the, uh, the system is just a readout or if we, get it, we can also configure an alarm. We'll select Enable. And in, in this, this now brings up the, some selections where we can go ahead and tell the system to warn if our pressure is below a certain number, above a certain number. We can also tell it how long it waits until it throws a warning that the system is not within parameters. So go ahead and select sensor setup. Just like in, in rate and section control, we have to select which module the sensor is connected to. Each module has two pressure sensor inputs, and we need to tell the system which one to look for feedback on. In our case, it's pressure sensor one. And go ahead and select OK. And select OK again. When it brings us back out into the sensors tab, it'll show us our sensor. It'll also tell us what module we're installed on and which input it's coming in on. Go ahead and select OK. And we'll hit Finish Setup since our system only has one location. And the way to ensure that our system has been configured correctly is we'll see our location that we created, our material, we'll see our module, the serial number, and under the status bar here, which will say connected, which tells us that our module is on the CAN network and communicating with the display. We'll go ahead and select OK, and that'll conclude our control setup. The last se section of our field IQ setup is going to be the material assignment. Within this screen, it'll tell it, we'll be able to tell the system what material we're going to be, lo we're going to be using. So if you select the material, this allows us to change which material out of our material library that we're going to be setting up and using. Go ahead and select water. In version 7.0, it gives us the, op the option here to select the calibration constant um, from either the location or the material. So we can use a common calibration across the board depending on the material, or we can calibrate it separately for each material. As you can see the calibration constant number changes when the material and location are selected. For this simple application on our sprayer we're going to go ahead and select location and just use that calibration constant. And that that'll conclude the material assignment. That tells the system what material it's going to be applying uh, and it also allows you to select the calibration and go into your flow calibration which will be covered in another video. Go ahead and select OK and that will bring us back out to our field IQ setup screen. Go ahead and hit OK again and it will bring us out to configuration and then back out to the main screen.